Hello everyone and welcome back to another GTA Online Guide. Today we're going to be comparing the differences, advantages and disadvantages of using first person and third person modes while going about your day in the city of Los Santos. So quite a few people wanted me to do this video and I never really looked into using first person view in GTA Online before. I guess it's just me preferring the default look over anything else but let's throw that out of the window and do some research. So when people talk about first person mode they usually refer to using it while on foot. I can see people enjoying the use of first person mode while driving, but we're not really going to be talking about driving today. We're going to be looking into on foot aspects of first person view in regards to general moving around, your ability to look around, and ultimately using guns. So the first thing we're going to test is just how agile you are while moving around. As some of you who've tried first person mode will know, when you sprint, you don't have the freedom of tilt stick movement like you do with third person mode. The game sort of goes into tank controls mode. And and that's perfectly fine since a lot of games do that, but with GTA, I don't know, it doesn't feel as responsive as games such as Call of Duty and Battlefield. Like there's a delay between going into and out of sprint mode to do anything like aim. So ultimately it's up to the camera controls to do most of the work when in first person mode. But to test just how effective first person and third person are in terms of moving around and basic shooting, I laid out an assault course. Here's how it works. So we start off here, we go up the stairs, go around the corner, go through the building, and then go down here in the alleyway. From here I get out my gun and then shoot all of these billboards. And I put the gun away, jump over here, climb over this thing, and then into the pool. And then sprint all the way over here. Turn around, go up the stairs, and then I get my gun out again, shoot these billboards, and then I go through here, turn right, and go along here, turn right again through here, past the, uh, the homeless dude, through here, and go over the edge, do a roll, and that's the finish line. So that's how the course is going to work. So for this test I'm going to be taking the run on both mouse and keyboard and controller with both views enabled just to see what differences it makes in terms of agility when using all control methods with all view modes so which one will win? And they're off! The first person views are straight up the stairs and in the building followed closely by the third person modes going down the alleyway the first person modes are going to shoot their guns now you can clearly see the difference between using a mouse to aim and using a thumbstick, or at least in my case. Now we're going through the pool. Looks like the first person mouse aim controls is leading the way. Going up the stairs now, ready to aim at the second set of targets. Oh yes, and the first person mouse is leading the way, miles. Followed by the third person mode. And the first person mouse is about to cross the finish line and there he goes, followed very closely by the third person. Oh, and just after that the first person controller and in last place the third person controller. So it's pretty easy to see that the mouse and keyboard had the upper hand when it came to the calls on both first person and third person view. But more importantly, it seemed that the first person view mode performed the best when tackling this obstacle course. But I think it was only because there wasn't too much tight cornering. But even then, if you're using a mouse to control a camera, then first person or not, you're not going to have any issues moving around. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's talk about differences between first and third person modes when in combat. Basically, third person mode gives you more peripheral vision, allowing you to see where you're walking when also aiming down the sights of your gun. Whereas in first person mode, you have very little peripheral vision, even with the field of view turned all the way up. But what you lose in vision, you gain in agility. Here I am with a sniper rifle looking down the scope, while in third person mode, I move left and right as fast as I can. Okay, that makes myself a pretty hard target to hit, but let's try first person mode. Damn, you're able to change your movement direction so much faster than in third person mode. Here's what it looks like from another perspective. Third person. First person. 
Now a lot of hardcore snipers use this trick to make themselves as hard a target as possible, as every little thing helps when it comes to 1v1 sniper battles. Another thing to think about with first and third person modes is taking cover. By default you automatically go into third person when you go into cover. Because what's better, this? Or this? To be fair, there's a whole bunch of options which allow you to fine tune when you're automatically in first person view and when it'll temporarily put you in third person view. With all these settings at your disposal, I think everyone first and third person will be able to get the most out of their game, if they give first person mode a try that is. And I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the Pyro Gaming channel for loads more GTA Online guides coming to you very soon. See you around!